Welcome back. It's IBM Edge 2012. I'm John MacArthur here on SiliconANGLE TV. I'm here with my uh, co-host, David Floyer, co-founder of Wikibon. And we have as our guest to, uh, now for this segment, Doug Babcock. He's a solutions architect with Evolving Solutions. So, uh, Doug, uh, tell us a little bit about Evolving Solutions. So we're an IBM storage lead business partner out of the uh, Minneapolis area. Um, we handle the full breadth of IBM products, server storage, um, and networking. And my focus in the organization is pre-sale storage architect. Okay, and and is there a solution set that you focus on uh, more? What kinds of problems that you are, are you focusing on? Uh, storage is actually our largest business segment. Um, so we do all kinds of storage solutions from high-end DS8800 through XIV to V7000. Um, we also have a specialty area in both System P, uh, AIX, um, and System X as well. And now Pure Systems coming on, online very okay. quickly. Okay. Uh, you were part of, uh, if I understand correctly, you were part of the XIV launch team, is that right? Correct. Prior to joining uh, Evolving Solutions, I spent two years at IBM and joined them uh, from another major vendor uh, to help launch the XIV you technology. You can mention the other major vendor, it's okay, it's <laughs> not a problem. I actually have uh, history with both Hitachi and EMC. Okay, all right. And so tell us a little bit about why XIV is winning, when it's winning, What what are the... So uh, I think the, the key thing about XIV is a very powerful software platform when it comes to storage with extreme ease of use. Um, and those two combinations reduce customer cost and reduce our time as a, as a business partner for implementation services as well. So very quick time to value with the product um, as well as being, is very, uh, being very performance oriented and very powerful from a software feature standpoint. Is there an application set that's sort of a best fit for XIV? Uh, we do everything from VMware to Oracle to, uh, we have an SAP customer that's in production on multiple XIV systems. Uh, so it's a really a broad breadth of, of uh, technologies that we've been able to deploy very successfully on XIV. Uh, Evolving specializes in the healthcare business in the Twin Cities area. Um, and we spend a lot of time on. Do you reach Epic down to systems. Mayo Clinic? Do you reach down to Mayo Clinic? We do reach down to Mayo Clinic from time to yeah. time. Um, we're not actively down there at the yeah. moment, but uh, yeah, we've we've dealt with them on a storage basis on multiple levels mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm interested in uh, how you decide between the different you know, products. They've got a the, pretty the different broad, platforms. Different right. platforms. Schedule. Right. You've got the the V7000. You've got the XIV. You've got. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, was it four or five different ranges? Yeah. So, so, how do you, what, for example, how would you decide between a V7000 and an XIV? What, what, what are the factors you take into account? And maybe, maybe you've got a situation you could talk about that's been recent where you had this, uh, uh, these options open to you. Sure. I, and cost is always a factor. Um, the other thing that we look to is um, what platforms are supported. Uh, for example, we did a, a very large IBM I implementation recently, and that was on DS8800 because that's where the synergies are with the I systems and, and the storage. Uh, for XIV, it's pretty much anything open storage or open. I'm sorry, open systems. Um, again, there's a uh, capacity entry point with XIV that's a little higher than with V7000, for example. Sure, so it's about where? Uh, probably about 50 terabytes on an average basis for XIV. If okay. it's below that, we're going to be looking at V7000. If it's above that, we're starting and leading with XIV mm -hmm. in all cases. Right. And it's just we've had great success with XIV um, across multiple industries, and that is our go-to platform. There's been a lot of discussion about um, sand volume controller here. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're doing an XIV implementation, are you often doing it with a uh, sand volume controller or not? I would say early on that was the case. Uh, when, I, when I initially joined the IBM team to launch XIV, over 50% of our implementations of XIV were behind SVC. Mm -hmm. I would say that number is probably down in the 20% range on average now. One of the value propositions of SVC is the ability to migrate data easily across platforms. So Correct. I'm thinking about the customer who's a, maybe they're a V7000 prospect today, but maybe they're going to be an XIV prospect down the, in a, down, down the road. Yep. Because they're growing fast enough, they'll make, hit that, would you say, 50 terabyte sort of limit, maybe it'll be 100 terabytes. How are you going to handle, the, how, how would you recommend the migration of the data from a V7000 to a, to a um, XIV? Multiple approaches. XIV does have a built-in migration capability similar to what the SVC does for image mode migrations. So if it's a one-way migration, XIV can offer that kind of um, okay. same capability that SVC can. If you want the true any-to-any -any vendor storage migration at any time, that's where SVC has the strength. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, so, um, can you talk about a particular case? Um, you know, w what are the issues? You don't, that, don't uh, have to name the customer. No, just don't, don't, just yeah. interested in sort um, of talk about a uh, particular implementation and the issues that come up. What have you heard about this announcement? This so, yeah, it, with either cases. SVC V7000 or XIV, if you want to use the array-based migration capabilities, you're going to take a brief downtime to reassign the volumes from the current storage over to the new storage system or the new virtualization platform. If the customer doesn't want to take those outages, then we'll use some host-based utility. Maybe it's a logical volume manager at the host level or a storage vMotion with VMware. Um, and that gives them the option of doing a completely non-disruptive migration across any storage platform that they want to do. So that's kind of the deciding factor about whether we use the uh, storage array migration capability or whether we use um, the server capabilities. Right, right, yeah. Either is viable, either works. Is there uh, a just time a advantage of, for one or just a user? Um, Yes and no. Uh, you know, when you move up to the server level, you're when migrating large amounts of data, you've got to bring all the data up to the server and back down again. There's a performance cost for doing that. There's a time associated with doing that with, uh, in conjunction with a regular production workload. If you're using the array or virtualization engine uh, migration capabilities, that can all be in the background, and we use the the uh, storage array cycles to do the work as opposed to the server cycles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, pluses and minuses for each one. I think the deciding factor uh, for most of my customers is whether they have the downtime available to do right. a one-time cable swing, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And ma ma making those that that time available is often exactly. a, a big negotiation. And the, and the good the news is with all those products, you can do it volume by volume, or you can do it server by server, or you can do it array by array. It's just a matter of how your downtime windows coincide. Right. So what in the event here today, what's been the highlights for you uh, of, of the... Uh, uh, for me, it's just networking with all my friends at IBM, I think. Is <laughs> 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 it's been just wonderful to see everybody again that I... that Because yeah. I, I used to be more kind of on a national presence and now I'm more local again. Did you uh, come down with customers? Did you bring customers yeah, down? Yeah, we came down with uh, two customers, uh, Prime Therapeutics and Medtronic. Mm -hmm. um, so we're supporting them across multiple levels and attending a lot of sessions with them. And then just catching up with some of my XIV colleagues, at, you know, session to session, and uh, some of the people out, out that do great work out in the IBM ATS team um, that I've had a chance to deal with in the past. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah. What about the compression announcement? Does that uh, brought some interest? To Absolutely. In fact, I attended a session on that this morning, and uh, I'm going to do another one tomorrow. Uh, very interesting technology. Um, I think it'll give IBM a competitive advantage for high capacity V7000 environments. Um, and we're just going to kind of tweak it a little bit and find out exactly you know, how to configure best practices, those kind of things as we go forward. But yeah, good introduction by ABM and, and the RTC technology that backs it uh, was a very good acquisition by ABM uh, about a year ago, I think, if I remember correctly. From, from Storewise. Yeah, from Storewise, yeah. correct. Yeah. 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 Yep, cool technology. Yeah. So um, how do you see your practice sort of evolving over the next um, year or so, year, a couple years? What do, you, what do you need to do differently? I think um, you know what we're focused on right now is kind of what I would call our more white space accounts, growing our business presence within the Twin Cities community. Um, Storage-wise, now I think we've got a portfolio that's uh, you know second to none kind of thing. We've got a whole bunch of good different offerings for different levels of, of customers and sizes of businesses. Uh, so it's going to be taking those different technologies and applying them to the right uh, the bit, right business model, right business size. Mm -hmm. in the Twin Cities market. Mm -hmm. So how are, pure, how are the pure system announcements going to impact you? Are you look, do you have any pull on those from, uh, from we, customers? We do, we're still, um, we're still kind of qualifying how the storage existing and uh, internal to that uh, gonna offering work. is going to yeah. work. Uh, yeah. From my standpoint, uh, from a server standpoint, all of our guys that are in the mid-range uh, P-Series market or any of the System X markets are really looking forward to the Pure Systems model coming out because it, it's going to simplify the hardware packaging and deployment as well as, uh, if you look into Pure System application level, being able to spin up clones uh, of user environments very quickly. It's going to be very attractive. Mm -hmm. And when you think of sort of best of breed versus integrated solutions, what mm -hmm. what um, what's the pull from the customer perspective one versus the other? Um, I think if you look at it from the peer system standpoint, it's the integration, right? We want to be able to do everything from one control point. We want it to be very automated, very simple. Uh, if I look at kind of the technologies in general for external storage, then I, I'm a big fan of XIV. Uh, I spend so much less time with my XIV customers than I've spent with traditional rate array kind of customers. Um, so it, to me, that's the platform of choice, uh, not, from, not from only my time standpoint, from a customer value time standpoint. 
So you go I'm a big fan. When you're selling XIV, who are you going up head to head, head, to head against? Uh, we'll go up at anything from a EMC's high end systems. Uh, the VNX line is kind of a no-brainer for me. We can we can go differentiate ourselves there very quickly. Um, but it's it's tackling the VMAX systems that I think is kind of our, our uh, the point that we really go head to head with EMC and XIV. And so when you're positioning against VMAX, what's what's the what's your strong selling point? Uh, ease of use and cost. Yeah. Those two things. How much yeah. of a difference? Um, I don't watch the cost side as much, but you know, <laughs> I'm going to say probably if I had to guess two to three to one at least. Uh, you know, for same capacity, and if you start getting into he an EMC VMAX environment where software licensing is heavy and predominant, we could be as high as four to one or six to one is the on a cost how, savings. How important is the disaster recovery or data replication capabilities over distance? Across, you know, uh, IBM's got a pretty robust. I mean, EMC's got a pretty robust uh, set of replication technologies. IBM's got competitive offerings there. Correct. But how? Um, uh, I, I know the licensing is a big issue. With EMC, with the licensing a business issue, and uh, I would say there's something called an incumbent advantage. Um, converting yeah. from one replication technology to another replication technology uh, still has some difficulties about doing that all in parallel with uh, the ability to recover the remote site on either technology at the same time. Right. We can get close to that with a combination of logical volume mirroring and uh, whatever the incumbent replication technology is, and the new one, whether it's XIV or DSA 800 or SVC, for example. Um, but converting or getting the customer to buy into a conversion based on cost savings. Yeah. It's a pretty you know, sticky it, sale. The implementation, isn't it? Yeah, These are pretty yeah, sticky sales. Yes, they are. So, yes, they are. And, and, yeah. and I understand the is relatively competitive in this on the sales side. Yeah, uh, yeah just yeah. relatively. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I spent six and a half years at EMC, so I'm very you're, familiar you're, with that. You're and, familiar with that sales. And line. sometimes I'm still trying to take out what I put in. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> what about, what about uh, backup archive? You had practices there, and uh, yeah, we uh, we have a couple really good size, successful invitations with Protect here um, as a deduplication and virtual tape technology. Uh, a couple good accounts for that, and uh, once we kind of bundled our implementation services as a business partner with the product set from IBM, um, and we also provide some ongoing maintenance activity services for the customer. That the blend of that kind of model uh, makes protected deployment very easy um, and reduces the customer need to keep up with some of the software upgrades that IBM comes out with from time to time. Um, so once we got to that model of a combined product services um, and maintenance uh, level activity, the protected implementations have gone very smooth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and customers see a huge realization. Um, you know, one customer is seeing over 16 to 1 on a deduplication factor. Maybe we're an eight to one, ten to one on other accounts, and, and that makes the price point in the, uh, of virtual tape technology competitive, and then it releases some of the management needs around uh, physical tape technology. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you make of the uh, new announcement on the file system access to uh, uh, oh, LTFS? To LTF, yeah. Yes, I, I, you know I haven't worked with it personally yet. Um, I think there are certain places in our customer environment where they need to do seven year holds on things where I think that's going to be very attractive to them because they don't have to maintain an application or other kind of software interface in order to get at the low cost storage capability of tape. So we're looking forward to finding where that fits in some of our environments and then maybe simplifying customer procedures that they're doing something custom to get to tape for long term archive today and moving that to a file system based model instead. Doug? Hope this was uh, not too painful. Oh, Thanks not for at joining all. us. You're huh? very welcome. I appreciate it. Doug Babcock, from, uh, Solutions Architect with Evolving Solutions, here with David Floyer. We are live on Silicon Angle TV at IBM Edge 2012. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be we'll be right back. Thank you both. Thank you for joining us.